Mm -hmm. Let's get started. So welcome you all to the live session thing on the course manufacturing process and technology one and two. So here we will be solving some uh, practice problem based on the electro discharge machining process. So uh, let's get started. So this is the first problem. First of all, please uh, try it by yourself. After that, uh, we will discuss together so uh, to state the problem you can keep your response in the chat box after that we will solve it together okay so okay so let's get uh, let's start discussing so what has been asked in the problem which of the following statement is true for the electro discharge machining in or edm so first statement is the material removal takes place due to the melting and evaporation of the workpiece material and second is any electrical conductor can be machined by this method and third one is some light oil like transformer oil or kerosene oil is used as dielectric so uh, before that let's quickly see uh, how the electro discharge machining takes place and probably after that we will be able to uh, get the answer of this question so this is a very simple schematic of the electro discharge machining so like till now we have been uh, studying lots of uh, machining processes uh, earlier we had studied conventional machining process there we have learned about turning milling drilling all those things and after that we now we are studying non-conventional machining techniques so basically why we require non-conventional machining te techniques it is because there are several materials which are difficult to machine which we cannot machine by uh, conventional machining methods mm -hmm. for that we need to go for the non-conventional machining techniques so uh, electro discharge machining it is a one of the non-conventional machining techniques here uh, this is the overall setup so let's uh, let's look the setup little closely so here what we have we have suppose this is the work piece so we have work piece now I am drawing here and we want to make let's say some some uh, square hole on the workpiece okay so if work, workpiece looks something like this what we want we want to make some hole something like this okay so earlier methods we have studied like ultrasonic machining or abrasive jet machining there we were using uh, abrasive particles for the machining but here we are going to use different method that is depend that is by electrical discharge so if we want this kind of hole square hole then here we take a tool which had shape of which has counter shape of this hole so our tool cross section will also be something like square so this is the tool 
and this is the workpiece. So what we do here, we apply some voltage across tool and workpiece. Here as I am already telling the process name is electrical discharge machining. So somehow we have to create this electrical discharge between the workpiece and the tool. So that can be generated only by if we apply some potential difference across the workpiece and tool. So here the tool we are giving negative polarity and workpiece we are giving positive polarity. So there is a reason why we are doing like that, why we are giving negative polarity to the tool, why we are providing positive polarity to the workpiece. So that I think that can be understood uh, after understanding the discharge process. Okay. So right now just uh, remember we are giving negative polarity to the tool. And there is the complete setup is submerged inside a dielectric. So this liquid, this is the liquid which has been shown here. That is the dielectric liquid. Dielectric is nothing. It is a insulator. dielectric are the those materials which are insulator of the electricity so oh, and one more thing is here when we apply voltage across the workpiece and the tool so there is a potential difference between workpiece and tool so in this reason if you see then there will be a huge potential difference and between the tool and the workpiece you can see there is a region which is fully covered by dielectric so now i will let it i will amplify the diagram a little bit more so here we have tool This is the workpiece, and in between design is built by the dielectric. Now we have applied some negative negative potential here, and workpieces. Workpiece is, has positive workpiece is at positive potential, and there is a when there's this potential is too high. So, what do you think? What will happen because of potential difference? So, if there is a potential difference, then there will be electric field. Yes, correct. Arc strike will happen. So, uh, I am uh, explaining little more deep how the arc has been is being generated. So, if if this potential difference is not very high, then nothing will happen. So, there will be a reason of electric field between the tool and the workpiece. So, these lines which I am showing, it is nothing but it is some electric field so if electric if this e value the electric field generated because of this potential difference if this electric field value is less than breakdown voltage of or break, breakdown electric field of the dielectric then arc will not produce so if E applied is greater than 
key breakdown then only then only discharge will takes place so if uh, i will go uh, in the mechanism little bit deeper in the next problem uh, right now i am skipping that part just remember because of this electric field when this condition is reached when this condition is reached then dielectric breakdown will happen and formation of spark will take place so uh, right now i am using the word spark not the arc so when dielectric breakdown will happen it means there will be formation of iron column between the tool and the workpiece so in between the tool and workpiece there will be reason i am showing in the green formation of iron column will takes place so have you ever seen this kind of phenomena earlier yes if you remember your welding process arc welding process there also same kind of phenomena was happening so there we were getting arc here we are we are interested in spark so if this iron column is continued then it is called arc and if after some time we are going to break down this iron column then that is called spark and this is both arc and spark are visible so that can be seen by eyes so arc is nothing but it is continuous spark and spark we can see when iron column So in this part, formation of iron column takes place, and this iron column, after some time, this iron column dies out. So formation of iron column. Sorry. Formation of iron column momentarily momentarily so this iron column forms for very small uh, for very small time so why this is important because when this iron column goes out or when when this dies out when it iron column dies out then production of high shock waves shock waves takes place during the when this formation of iron column takes place for very really small amount of time during this period lots of heat is generated and temperature rise takes place so, and locally temperature rise takes place so if you see the order then it can go more than 10000 degree celsius for very small region so so if you see if near about this let's say very small region i am showing their temperature rise go more than 10000 degree celsius and because of this temperature rise material gets evaporated
as well as melting of material takes place and after melting material if if we don't if if our column will not if our column will not die out then continuous melting of material will keep on taking place that we are not interested in melting the material we are interested in melting the material and then removing the material melting then removing so that can be done only if we are if on that can be done only when we remove the material up after some time therefore we need a spark so because of spark a small amount of material gets melted and when this spark dies out at the same time shock waves produced and because of this shock waves this small amount of material which was melted that is that is being removed okay so because of shock waves a small amount of material removal takes place a small amount of material removal takes place so if if this spark will not goes out then shock waves would not shock waves would not have been produced so in order to produce shock waves we need we need spark rather than arc okay so that was our aim we want to remove material in very localized region very controlled manner so that we are going to do in the electro discharge machining by using electrical discharge so let's try to look at the options the first one is the material removal takes place due to melting and evaporation of the material yes it is correct so since i told temperature goes more than 1000 degrees uh, 10000 degrees celsius definitely material will melt and as well as it will evaporate and then and second statement is all about any electrical conductor can be machined by this method yes because we are providing potential difference and because of potential difference iron column has, iron column is formation of plasma column has been taking place where electron and ions both are coming into the picture and this can be possible only if only if workpiece material is conductive material electric it should be electrically conductive so yes this is also a requirement of electro discharge machining and here we are using some dielectric material in between the tool and the workpiece so that is the reason of using dielectric material is to facilitate r as well as to wash away the material which has been uh, which has come up which has been come out after the melting so that is the task of the dielectric fluid so so whatever material is being uh, removed because of the discharge that has to be washed away that is been done by the dielectric fluid also dielectric fluid avoid the oxidation of the workpiece so after the discharge if the reason we don't want oxide labor over the workpiece because of if if this process would have been taking place in the presence of oxygen so at this much high temperature definitely our workpiece is going to be oxidized but if we don't supply oxygen then oxidation of workpiece 
will not take place. So that can be avoided by using dielectric uh, dielectric medium. So mostly kerosene oil and sometimes D D and his water. It is also used. So this is also correct. So all three statements are correct regarding the electro discharge machining. So correct answer is C. So I think I have explained the solution of this answer. If there is some doubt, please ask me or we shall move to the next problem. Okay, so let's move to the next problem. Please, please read the problem and uh, you can give your response in the chat box. Yes, yes, uh, both of you are correct. So, so here we can see uh, this is the exaggerated view of the uh, sparking region. Okay, so here we have the tool, tool I earlier told this is. Yeah, sorry negative charge this we connect with the negative voltage and what this is positive so uh, now I will explain a uh, little bit for little bit the how the spark formation process takes place so first of all uh, when we apply such kind of potential difference between uh, between any two material which is conductor so what will happen formation of electric field will takes place okay and because of this electric field what will happen first of all if this electric field if we, right now suppose we have this dielectric medium this is dielectric this is tool this is workpiece So we keep on increasing the potential difference between the tool and the workpiece and because of it electric field is being created and if this electric field is very high then first of all what will happen then if the work function of the tool material is smaller so work function work function of if work function of tool is smaller then if we apply little higher electric field then what will happen electrons will come out from the tool surface so very first process which takes place in the electro discharge machining in the formation of spar the first thing takes place that is called cold emission of electrons cold emission of from tool okay so 
you must be knowing if we apply sufficient electric field uh, to a uh, conductor then uh, its valence electron can be removed after sufficient strength of electric field that is known as cold emission or the field emission so first of all electrons from tools they get ejected and they these are the valence electrons they come out from the tool and they get accelerated because of this electric field okay so since electric field is present over here and this is has sufficient strength to remove the electron from the tool as, so, as soon as electrons from the tool comes out then it gets immediately accelerated by this electric field and then they starts coming towards workpiece towards the positive charge so so when these these are called the primary electrons these are called primary electrons when these primary electrons pass through the dielectric towards the workpiece then they strike with the molecules of the dielectric atoms of the dielectrics and it ionizes the dielectric particle second step ionization of dielectric particles so this ionization of dielectric particles takes place because of the collision of primary electrons which are being accelerated toward the workpiece so when they collide to the atoms of the dielectric it ionizes the dielectric and after after this collision the in this region what we get we get primary electrons as well as the ions ion part ion particles of the dielectric medium as well as the secondary electrons also secondary electrons has been formed by the collision of primary electrons to the dielectric particles so when these primary electrons collide with the dielectric atoms then formation of ion plus secondary electrons takes place okay so now what you see in the spark column so here we see primary electrons ions secondary electrons so these two electrons are accelerated towards the workpiece they will accelerate towards the workpiece because workpiece is positively charged and the positive ions they will get accelerated towards tool because tool is negative charge okay so we can say avalanche of primary and secondary electrons they are being accelerated towards workpiece so when they strike to the workpiece because of collision to the workpiece they increase since these primary and secondary electrons they have lot of kinetic energy and when they collide with the workpiece they transfer this energy to the workpiece material and be temperature rise takes place 
So localized temperature rise takes place. So already I have told this temperature rise goes in the order of more than 10,000 degrees Celsius. So, so this primary and secondary electrons they are being highly accelerated. So sometimes if we apply sufficient electric field then they can reach the uh, their velocity can reach to the, near to the velocity of the light. So that much of high kinetic energy they are carrying with them, with them and when they collide to the workpiece they rise the temperature of the workpiece too much and because of which vaporization and melting of the workpiece material takes place. You must also be thinking when these positive ions they are also being accelerated towards the tool and when they will collide to the tool what will happen to the tool yes when the ion when these positive ions when they also have kinetic energy when they collide to the tool they are also increasing the temperature of the tool but they can since the number of ions it is very less so if you see the temperature rise in workpiece it has been happening because of kinetic energy of electrons and number of electrons are very very high so billion and trillions of electrons are there so very high number of electrons so very large amount of electrons with very high kinetic energy they strike to the workpiece they strike to the workpiece because workpiece is positively charged and therefore temperature rise of workpiece takes place very very high and therefore the material removal in the workpiece is higher whereas in the case of tool if you talk about the tool here temperature rise is happening temperature rise happens because of kinetic energy of positive ions and these ions are very less in number although they have kinetic energy but since they are very less in number in comparison to the number of electrons therefore they they are they are removing very small amount of material from the tool that's why we have given negative charge to the tool and positive charge to the workpiece because we want to machine workpiece rather than the tool tool we are main job of tool is it has counter shape of required geometry counter shape of required geometry as well as it should be conductive material so that it could help in formation of spark but we are not interested to losing the dimensional accuracy of the tool so we want very less material removal of the tool in comparison to the workpiece so this was the overall uh, process how the spark takes place and uh, how the material removal is being taking place so in this reason because of because of collision of high kinetic energy electron particles 
metal gets melted so this is the melted material but this whole region don't forget this whole region is surrounded by the electric so dielectric is in fluid form and if you see its temperature is 10,000 degrees Celsius but temperature of dielectric is it is room temperature let's say 20 degrees Celsius so this small region has very high temperature but this temperature will remain only 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 up to that time till the sparks till, till the spark survives when spark goes off then all the heat quickly get transferred to the dielectric and this molten material gets solidified and same time because of the shock waves there is a formation of low pressure zone or that we call cavitation as soon as sparks dies out immediately surrounding region of the this uh, material which which has been which was melted in surrounding region there is formation of low pressure zone because of the shock waves and this because of that this molten material simultaneously it is being solidified and it has been taken away it has been pulled out from the material and it is washed away by dielectric medium so that's how metal removal takes place in the electro discharge machining so in order to create shock waves and cavitation effect we are going for the spark so yes let's come to the question in the electro discharge machining the metal removal has been taking place by melting and vaporization is it correct okay some sir in earlier picture the node was shown as tool negative was workpiece but okay let me see no here this is the tool okay this is the tool this is negative and this is the workpiece this is positive Ravin, is it please check Ravin, are you talking about this okay okay so please remember always we are taking tool as a negative because on negative electrode the metal removal will be less whereas in the positive electrode material removal has been taking place faster and a reason already have ex i already have explained so correct correct answer is the melting and vaporization of of the workpiece material in local area locally this is the correct answer so if there is any confusion in the explanation okay if there is no confusion so let's move to the next problem please read the problem and try to give the response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together yes i am waiting for others yes both of you are correct basically one of the requirement of the electro discharge machining is the workpiece should be conductive so workpiece should be electrically conductive
so if you see here iron is the metal it is conductive alumina it is a ceramic it is non-conductive aluminum is conductive copper is conductive so only material which is which we cannot machine by the electro discharge machining is, is the alumina similarly glass wood those plastics those things we cannot machine by the electro discharge machining so this was straightforward so let's move to the next problem please read the problem and you can give your response in the chat box yes yes both of you are correct so uh, as i told in the electro discharge machining we have tool and we have the workpiece and this complete setup is inside a dielectric medium so this is dielectric So, so uh, basically dielectric, we use dielectrics to avoid the, because, uh, because of discharge, if you see locally, the material was being melted as well as it was getting evaporated. So if we would, so job of dielectric is to avoid oxidation as well as to facilitate state the formation of arc also so after the spark whatever material has been come out from the workpiece it needs to wash away washing away of debris or removed material so uh, one thing is that the dielectric material uh it should it should have sufficient break, breakdown strength so actually here we are looking for the two things from that dielectric first thing we are we want to apply a voltage between the tool and the workpiece so because of this voltage electric field will generate it so one thing is that this dielectric should not break down very easily it should not break down in the breakdown of dielectric or we can say e breakdown of dielectric should not be very small otherwise uh, before uh, otherwise uh, we will not able to provide sufficient energy to remove the material from the workpiece if the breakdown of dielectric medium takes place at very low voltages or it will small electric field that we don't want so this part should have sufficient energy in order to remove the material or to vaporize the material from the workpiece so dielectric break, if breakdown breakdown voltage for dielectric should be sufficiently high as well as uh, it should facilitate the formation of ions because i told first of all 
cold emission of electrons take place so those electrons should able to create ions when they collide with the dielectric material so suppose if those electrons will not able to ionize the dielectric medium then we will not able to get the uh, plasma column or the spark column so it should and one more property which we are looking from the dielectric material is dielectric material it should get ionized when primary electrons strikes with them so so there are uh, many functions of the dielectric to avoid oxidation to wash away the debris as well as it should not get uh, dielectric breakdown voltage should not be very smaller as well as it should have ability to get ionized when it get struck by the primary electrons so these are the some some properties which we which we use to select the proper dielectric or the suitable dielectric so as already you, you both of you have told the correct answer that is c so is it clear or some confusion is there if it is clear then we can move to the next problem otherwise uh, we can discuss Okay, since there is no doubt, so let's move to the next problem. Please read the problem and you can give your response in the chat box. After that, we will discuss it together. Yeah, I have got from uh, Nagasil Nivas. I am waiting. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think uh, you must be knowing the correct. Okay. So uh, uh, let. I want to spend some time on this problem actually. So um, basically, I want to explain uh, why it is happening. So. First thing is, let's read the question for maximum power delivery using resistance capacitance relaxation circuit in EDM discharge voltage should be. So, as I told in the electro discharge machining, we are interested in formation of spark rather than formation of arc that is clear why it why we want a spark is it clear or is still there is some confusion okay 
so if it is clear that we want spark rather than arc what does it mean it means we suppose i have i want as i told this is the tool this is workpiece this is positive charge tool is negative charge this is dielectric in between what do you think should we sorry tool should be negative charge so if we want to generate arc then if we if we are going to use some power source let's say we have some power source something like this so if we can we use some 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 battery suppose as i told we need negative charge on the tool positive charge on the workpiece then definitely you can think why don't we use we just take a battery and we connect the negative terminal of the battery with the tool and positive terminal of the battery with the workpiece do you think will it work if we apply if we supply sufficient voltage from the battery which is needed for the so suppose we have a battery which have, which can provide voltage so that the electric field here we are generating the electric field so this <coughs> electric field generated greater than electric field breakdown of the dielectric so suppose we have a battery which can create a electric field which is greater than the breakdown breakdown electric field of the dielectric medium can we connect them directly for electro discharge machining will it work will it generate arc or it will generate spark if we directly connect it please can you respond in the chat box if you take a battery which has sufficient capability to break down the dielectric field and if we connect it directly to the workpiece and the tool what do you think whether arc will generate it or spark will generate is it clear what i am asking no spark will not generate so why because we are continuously providing the negative terminal to the tool and positive terminal to the battery so this potential difference we are providing continuously so if we want to draw the voltage versus time what you will find you will find this kind of curve as i told what is arc arc is continuous continuous ion column where is the spark this is momentarily so we don't want continuous ion ion column we want momentarily spark because we want to generate shock waves so shock waves can be generated when this ion column goes out dies out so we want to we want melt the material and same time we want to produce shock waves so that whatever material we have melted it should get removed because of shock waves therefore we want spark spark is also ion column but it is for 
very small moment but arc is continuous iron column so this is for the arcing but if we talk about the sparking how it will look like something we want we don't want to provide continuous voltage between the tool and the workpiece we want to provide for very small time so that iron column will survive only for a small time and it should die out then only the shock waves can be produced is it clear or some confusion why we want spark rather than arc in the electro discharge machining is it clear or more clarification is needed please let me know then only we will move forward can you please respond in the chat box is it clear up to here what kind of voltage source we are looking for okay there is confusion between arc and spark okay let's clarify this first then we will move forward suppose this is the tool this is the workpiece now what we did we connected the tool with the negative terminal of the battery so this is the negative this is the positive okay so if we do this kind of connection and if we supply high voltage then what will happen formation of plasma channel will takes place okay here we have electrons ions cations electrons electrons ions ions so this this r column will remain as it is until and unless until the we are keep on supplying this voltage so this r column will not die out until and unless we will stop supplying this voltage if we keep on supplying this voltage continuously then what will happen this r column will remain here forever that's what happens in the welding process so if you have seen the welding process suppose we have two metals to join suppose these are the two materials which we want to join what we do we take we have we use this kind of electrode and we keep on moving this electrode over the join where the material needs to be joined this arc is continuous so it doesn't go off after some time it is continuous arc taking place material is melting and depositing melting and depositing material is melting and depositing so in welding process we want material should get melt as well as it should get deposited therefore we are using continuous arc there we are not interested in removing the material so arc is something which is continuous this iron column is continuous this is the plasma plasma channel this is continuous this keep this will so this is this 
so this kind of voltage we are providing a constant voltage constant voltage source in order to in order to generate arc but what happens in the spark this is the tool this is the workpiece connected is the positive you have connected with the negative this is a tool but here what we do for some time we will provide the voltage between the tool and the workpiece for very small time this kind similar kind of plasma channel will form But for, for after after a small time, let's say for oh, one microsecond, after one microsecond, we will remove this battery. Then what will happen? Since we remove the battery, this arc will die out. This arc will go away. This will get extinguished. Okay. So, but when this will get extinguished then what will happen production of shock waves will takes place when this arc will going to extinguish when this is going to die out at the same moment shock waves will get produced and because of this shock waves the material the the, the metal which has been melted over here this will this will get removed from here okay so this we want plasma channel for very small moment for the electro discharge machining so for and this is called sparking now it is clear or still some confusion is there spark is for very small moment arc is for continuous long time okay so if it is clear then it should also be clear for arcing we need this kind of voltage characteristics this voltage should be constant so source voltage should be constant with respect to time but for sparking we need some voltage source which will provide some voltage for some time and then up and then in between it should not supply any voltage so this kind of thing so for this small time till when th this small time is called t on time so for this small time then when the voltage is supplied that is called t on time and this time is known as t of time so during this period there is no voltage has been supplying after some time the voltage is been supplying by the voltage source and then again it has been turned off so by the by doing this what will happen a spark will generate after some time fit then again spark will generate here spark will generate spark will generate so sparking will happen after some time duration so we are looking for a voltage source which should provide this kind of this kind of voltage characteristics so that has been done by a circuit which is called which is called a relaxation circuit here so now i will draw the relaxation circuit and i will explain its function
this is our tool this is our workpiece and it is kept inside a dielectric and here this is the this is our battery which has a voltage of vo dc voltage source or battery and here we have a resistance that is the name which we are giving rc and here there is a capacitor So if you see here, here we have a voltage source battery V0, but this battery we are not connecting to the tool and the workpiece directly. So in between we are using some resistance and some capacitance. So if you see this negative terminal, this is going once so this negative terminal of the battery is connected to the one plate of the capacitor as well as to the tool and the positive terminal is connected to the workpiece as well as to the other end of the capacitor so by doing this this normally if we don't have used these two things then what we have got we would have got the voltage source similar to the arcing like this since we have connected this resistance and and this capacitance because of this the same voltage source now we have like this this is required for the sparking so I will quickly explain the mechanism I told that there we have there is a dielectric okay there is dielectric I already have explained dielectric has property that it should not get breakdown and or it should not facilitate the formation of arc a column and in an analyst we will reach the condition of E generated greater than the E breakdown so although so the until and unless this condition is reached the sparking is not going to happen so when we connected battery to battery to this setup so what will happen first of all first of all what will happen this suppose the maximum capacity of this battery is to in increase the voltage is V0 but as soon as we connect this battery the electric field in this region starts forming okay this electric field starts forming in both here and same time this capacitor will also starts 
चार्जिंग ओके सो ही है a charging current will run in this circuit that is called ICT ICT that is the current for charging as a function of time and same time so I told this circuit will not this here the current will not flow or the formation of plasma will not happen unless this condition is reached so till the time this condition will not reach this circuit will remain breaking so there is no conduction of electron will happen so before this condition this second circuit it will remain disconnected because this condition is not reached if this condition will not reach then between the tool and workpiece there is a insulator no current will flow therefore before this condition there is no current inside the this second circuit but there will be some current inside first circuit that is called charging current till here it is okay or some confusion is there have, have you understood how, or what is how this circuit is the function of this circuit till now whatever I have tell, told to you is it clear or some confusion is there okay so in each, at the beginning of the at the beginning only some charging current will flow inside the capacitor circuit this is the first circuit and in second circuit no current will flow because we haven't reached the breakdown condition so till that time charging of capacitor will takes place so I will quickly write down the equations and later on you can go and verify it by solving it by yourself so quickly I will write down the equation okay so if you try to write down the charging current how it will look like ICT is nothing but V0 minus VCT what is the VCT VCT is the voltage across the capacitor at time T so this voltage is not constant the capacity the voltage across capacitor will keep on changing that will depend upon the time how much charge accumulation has been taking place over the plates of the capacitor so voltage across capacitor is a function of time so it will look like the current equation should be something like this the change in voltage upon resistance so also current is nothing but rate of rate of transfer of charge dq by dt and this is same as here c is the capacitance So this current I have written like dq by dt and this q is nothing but it is q is equal to what capacitance time 
voltage across the capacitor okay so this q i have written like this okay so this is the equation for the current now if you rearrange it little bit it will look like something something like this what we did we use this term and this term and we equate it so we got something like this and again we can make a equation something like this we can integrate it to the both side so after integrating this what we will get we will get equation something like this we integrated the equation with respect to the time plus this is the k1 this is the integration constant so after integrating this earlier equation this equation the last one we got the, the this this equation but here we don't know what is the k1 so in order to find out k1 we use some known binary condition we know at the time t is equal to 0 then there was no charge no ch there was no charge in the condenser therefore vct was 0 so if you use this condition you can get k1 is equals to ln ln v0 and if you again back substitute it here we will get equation something like this ln of v0 minus vct is equals to t by crc plus ln of v0 and if you rearrange it little bit if you rearrange it little bit what you will get we will get okay so we got a equation of voltage across capacitor as a function of this time okay so c is the capacitance rc is the resistance in the relaxation circuit so also it is very common you already knowing that the multiplication of capacitance into resistance it is called the time constant or tau This is the equation for the voltage across the capacitor so now we know the voltage across the capacitor as a function of some time t now we want to find out what is the current so all this we are doing because we want to find out what should be the percentage of supply voltage for maximum power delivery 
so aim of this question is to find out the power uh, power delivery equation for as a function of supply voltage so we want to find out in what condition of supply voltage we will get the maximum power from the relaxation circuit which we have made that's why we are doing all these things since we want to find out the power which which will be supplied to the um, tool and the workpiece that will that we can find out only if we will be knowing what is the voltage across the capacitor and the current across the capacitor so what capacitor is doing it is accumulating energy what it does it accumulates the energy for some time and after some time when the condition of E generated is greater than E breakdown is reached at that at that time it quickly supplies the whatever charge it has accum accumulated over here in very small amount of time it will supply large amount of charge across the tool and the workpiece so that formation of arc will takes place so for some initial some time it will keep on collecting the energy and that's what we are trying to find out how much energy it is going to collect as a function of time so in order to find out the power we need to find out voltage and current so what is power power is nothing than voltage times current so voltage already we have find out now we need to find out current the current ICT is nothing we already told this is this and if we substitute the whatever values we have find out then we can find out the current so simplify if we will simplify we will get power current is equals to the voltage of source vo multiplied by e to the power minus t by c r c whole thing divided by r c so this is the current and this is the voltage that is been that is the function of time which is flowing inside the charging circuit of the here so in the first circuit as a function of time we have find out the current and voltage so now we know the power uh, we know the current and voltage what we will do we will try to find out the energy so we need to find out how much energy the capacitor is collecting for some time t so that energy because capacitor is going to give same amount of energy to the tool and the workpiece and that energy is going to remove the material so we need to calculate the energy so we are going to find out the small amount of energy which capacitor will collect in very small time I see so that will be equal to current times voltage multiplied by small time dt now we will substitute the ICT and 
VCT which we have got in earlier equation. So we will get this equation we will get after substituting this ICT and VCT from previous equation and if we integrate it and if we again put the boundary conditions so now I will not show the all the steps that you can go and verify by yourself directly I am writing the equation so if we integrate it after integrating And, and if we use the boundary condition what and using the boundary condition boundary condition what we will use at time t is equals to zero energy stored inside the capacitor is zero so that if you use this boundary condition and if you integrate it what we will get energy is equals to nothing v square by rc times tau in bracket we will get half plus of e to the power minus 2t by tau minus e to the power minus t by tau so tau is nothing it is equal to multiplication of rc times capacitance so this much of energy This much of energy each dumped dumped by capacitor to inter electrode gap zone. or we can say between the tool and workpiece so this much energy is collected by the capacitor for the time t and this much energy it will deliver to the uh, between the workpiece and the tool now the question is all about the power if you see the condition is for the maximum power delivery we need to find out the discharge voltage so right now we have arrived up to the energy so we have energy but now we need to find out the power so that power is energy will this energy we are providing to the uh, workpiece and the tool for some time for some time let's say called that time is called TC so this much of time it will take so this much of energy EN amount of energy we are giving uh, for the time duration of TC this much of energy we are giving so 
we need to find out average power so average power is nothing total amount of energy divided by total time of total time after which this is the tau tc this is the total time of after which we again uh, give the same amount of energy so this is the time duration for supplying the energy en so this is the average power sorry i need to add more pages what we do we now to convert this energy equation to the power equation average power equation we don't have to do anything we just divide we just need to divide the energy equation by that this time tc this and if we do that we will get something like this p average equals to en divided by this time tc which is nothing but v0 square by rc tc so we will get average power something like this and uh, now now what we have we will have a relation between the average power and some some variable which is which is the ratio of tc by t tc by tau tau was nothing it was rc times c so we can assume this this ratio as a another variable that is called y just for the simplification if if you do like that then we can get a equation something like this Okay. now we have got a equation between the average power and the y so these two are the variables and and we are interested in maximum power transfer for that what we have to do we have to differentiate this equation and we need to find out the optimum value of y so what we will do dp average by dy we will put it zero and find out the value of y so what we will get value of y is equal to 1.26 so optimum value of y which is nothing but tc by tau so this value we will get 1.26 so if we maintain this ratio then the power which we which we get here at the in this region in this region if we maintain that ratio then only we will get the maximum power between the tool and the workpiece so this ratio comes out to be 1.26 and what does it means it means we need to we need to charge the capacitor up to some voltage okay so that is up to us till what 
voltage we want to charge the capacitor that is controlled by us how we can control it so let me find out what is the what is the voltage across the capacitor what is the maximum voltage up to which we have to charge the capacitor so that this condition should fulfilled okay so as already i told vct is equals to v0 e to the power minus t by tau and already we have find out tc by tau is equal to 1.26 that is needed for maximum power delivery it means we need to charge the capacitor till the time tc is equals to tau times 1.26 tau is nothing tau is rc into c so we need to charge the capacitor till the time which will equals to rc times c into 1.26 this till this much of time we have to prevent the this condition e generated e breakdown so for the maximum power delivery we want to reach this condition after tc time okay so that's what we have find out so after tc time how much our capacitor will charge that we can find out by putting tc to here so if we put tc to here we can find out the what voltage will be there after time tc in the capacitor if you substitute it you will get v0 1 minus e to the power minus 1.26 and if you calculate it you will get vct is equals to 0 0.72 of v0 okay so this is the final value so if we charge the capacitor so here i will clean little bit okay so so what i am saying i am saying that we need to we need to prevent the charging of capacitor till the time tc or we can say we need to charge the capacitor till the voltage across the capacitor reach vct is equal to 0. Point 72 of v0 initially there was zero pole potential diff initially there was vct was zero at time t is equal to zero but at time t is equal to tc the voltage across capacitor becomes 0 0.72 of v0 as soon as we reach this condition our breakdown we want at the same time e generated is is greater than e breakdown condition should also reach if both condition will happen simultaneously 
then whatever discharge will happen it will happen at the maximum power delivery and if this will happen then we will get maximum MRR so this I am telling that we want discharge to happen when this our capacitor gets charged up to 72% of V0 so that is controlled by us how we are controlling we are controlling it by controlling the inter electrode gap so if you see here what is E E is nothing but V by this distance this D or inter electrode gap okay so V is nothing V is VCT so what is electric field electric field is electric the formula for electric field is potential uh, potential difference upon distance okay so we maintain the inter electrode gap in such a way so that discharge discharge will happen only when the capacitor should reach 72 percent of voltage if we maintain the inter in inter electrode gap in that way then we will get maximum power delivery okay so that is the condition the correct answer for this problem is p 72 percent and i have explained each and every step so how or what is the physical meaning of all these things so is it clear is it clear okay okay so if it is clear let's move to the next problem you can give your response in the chat box after that we will discuss it together okay so here if we see the problem it has been given in electric discharge machining the pulse cycle time tc can be obtained using the relation uh, resistance capacitance and this discharge voltage so uh, if you remember just in the previous question what we did we find out voltage across capacitor is equals to v0 in the bracket 1 minus e to the power minus t by rc multiplied by c this relationship already we know so uh, quickly i will also draw the diagram so this was the capacitor and here we have connected with the tool and here we have the workpiece so here we had vct here we have some resistance rc this was the v0 and here it has been asking about the discharge voltage vd so discharge voltage is vd is nothing but it is the voltage across the tool and the workpiece when discharge will happen so vd is equals to vct at the time of discharge
okay so when vct all the voltage across the capacitor it will reach to the discharge voltage then discharge will happen so what we can do we can replace the vct by vd when discharge will happen vd is equals to v0 v0 is the source voltage in the bracket 1 minus e to the power minus t by rc times c and if you rearrange this equation you will get you will you will get some equation something like this t is equals to c r c ln one divided by one minus if v zero sorry v t divided by v zero so now if you are again rearrange it you will get t is equal to c r c ln v zero divided by v zero minus v d so as i already i told this time this time is nothing but this is the time after which discharge will takes place so time after discharge will takes place that we call it tc because tc is the total time of charging of capacitor so till the time tc we are charging the capacitor and just after the tc discharge is happening momentarily so this time will be tc so as soon as capacitor will charge up to the breakdown voltage that time will be the tc tc is equals to crc ln v0 divided by v0 minus vd so which option is this this is yes this is here p okay is it clear is it clear or some confusion is there okay if it is clear let's move to the next problem Please read the problem and try to understand it and after that uh, you can try to solve it Okay, since already we are running out of time so what i will do i will quickly explain the solution and later on you can go and solve it by yourself okay so here during the electric discharge machining we want to machine a hole of diameter 25 mm in a steel material low carbon steel which has thickness of 2 mm with the brass tool and the dielectric is the kerosene and here we are using the relaxation circuit which i have shown earlier and it has the circuit resistance of 100 ohms and capacitance of 10 microfarads and supply voltage is 200 volts and gap is maintained the entire electrode gap is maintained in such a way so that the discharge will take place at the 150 volts now what we have to calculate what is the time which is needed to drill so quickly i will 
draw the diagram suppose we have a sheet or some some steel plate something like this and we want to make a circular hole inside it by electro discharge machine so the diameter of this hole is 25 mm and the thickness of the hole is it is nothing but 2 mm so this much of hole we want to make by the electro discharge machining and other things are given so we need to find out how much time it will take so first of all what we will do we will calculate how much material we need to remove in order to make this much of hole so we need to calculate the volume of the hole so total volume of hole is total volume of hole this or the total volume of the material which we need to remove is that is cylindrical in shape so pi d square by 4 times thickness or we can substitute the values we will get we, we will get 981.25 mm square so this much of oh sorry mm cube this much volume of material we need to remove from the workpiece so for that we need to calculate the total time so let's try to find out whatever source which we have been given for rc circuit so this is this circuit is something like this this is the tool and here we have workpiece it is inside something like this and this open and this source voltage is 200 volts this resistance is 100 ohm and this capacitance is 10 microfarad and this here the VD voltage at the time of discharge is 150 volts okay so let's try to find out how much energy which will be produced which which how much energy which has been collected by the capacitor so that is nothing but energy that is that has been collected by the capacitor to generate the spark that is nothing but half c v discharge square okay so this is nothing but energy energy of one spark so this so if we substitute the values we will get that will comes out to be this much of joules okay so for one spark we have this much of energy so if we have this much of energy for one spark then we need to find out the power how much power we have for one spark so power means what energy per unit time so if we if we find out how much time it is needed to generate this much of power then we can calculate the 
then we can calculate the power power is nothing but en divided by tc and if you remember what was tc tc was nothing but rc times c ln v0 divided by v0 minus vd okay so i need to add more page So, if we find out the how much time is required to generate one spark, then we can calculate the spark of the power. So, that's what we are doing here. If we substitute the values, then what we will get? If we substitute the value, we will get this much of time. So, this much of time is needed to generate one spark, and the amount of energy which is needed, which will be generated, required for the sparking, that is this much. Now, we will calculate the power of the. We will calculate the power of the uh, spark. So that is nothing but P average is equals to, to energy divided by TC. If we do it, we will get so I have multiplied this 10 to the power minus 3 so that I could get the power in the kilowatts so if you calculate it you will get 0 0.0811 kilowatt of power okay to generate so this much power we are using to for the edm process now if you have seen the lectures then mrr there is empirical relationship between the mrr and the power uh, and power used for the discharge electro discharge machining so that empirical relationship is nothing but 27.4 times p average to the power 1.54 mm cube per minute so this is empirical relationship so if we substitute the values over here then what we will get so here power is in the kilowatt so metal removal rate which we will get for given power source for given material is 0.572 mm cube per minute so now we know the material removal rate also we know how much material we need we need to remove so total time we can find out total time for drilling that is nothing but 981.27 divided by MRR that will come out to be 17.15 minutes which is nothing but near about 28 hours so correct answer for this problem is 28 hours So is it clear or there is some doubt in some step? Okay. 
okay if it is clear then we can quickly move to the next problem please read the problem and you can give your response in the chat box yes yes uh, yes both of you are correct so i will quickly show it by the schematic that in the electro discharge machining so suppose we want to make a drill then what is happening so yes uh, i can take next question but there are many people who who are not uh, watching this video live so for them uh, i need to quickly explain so that they won't feel the problem so uh, therefore uh, i want to explain quickly so that whoever watch this video later they won't feel any difficulty they won't find any difficulty yes so yes so this is a tool this is the workpiece so as you know so if we have tool uh, then what uh, the machining is happening because of the spark which is generating so spark will generate wherever the this condition will reached we are giving the negative supply here positive supply here so e generated is greater than e breakdown if this condition is reached anywhere there spark will takes place so so apart from this apart from this reason everywhere here here spark will takes place and because of this we are expecting a hole which should be complete cylindrical but near the edges but near the edges we are getting some tapered property something like this so that is happens and that that happens in during the drilling of the hole in the electro discharge machining also already you know our tool has some diameter dt but the whole diameter is is dt plus something delta plus some delta so this has happened because of the side discharge which has been taken place and that is called the overcut and third one is the hardening of the surface so since you know locally there is a melting of material takes place and lots of temperature is generated and because of that there is a small a small region of heat affected zone takes place or because of rapid cooling formation of something martensitic or hard phase takes place because of rapid cooling and that is very hard phase so that is called the hardening of the surface yes so all the all the phenomena takes place in the electro discharge machining so correct answer is d so let's move to the last problem please read the problem and you can give your response in the chat box
means I am waiting for others. Okay. So let's quickly discuss this problem. The material removal rate as a function of spark cap. So, uh, so what is the material removal rate? Material removal rate is something directly proportional to the energy energy stored by the capacitor for the discharging. That is equals to half C V D square and same time how much spark is being generated in one second so that is nothing but frequency so frequency this is the number of spark generated per unit time this is the energy of one spark so material removal rate is proportional to this quantity so what has been asked in the question material removal rate as a function of spark cap so what is the how spark cap is related to the vd so already i have told this discharge takes place only when e generated is greater than e breakdown what is e it is the electric field between the workpiece and tool okay so this is the electric field value e and e is nothing e is equals to vd by this cap this cap let's say this is t okay so we have to reach this value e breakdown value and that will depend upon the this sparse spark cap and this voltage t so now if we try to write the vd as a function of because a breakdown is a constant quantity so what is vd vd is nothing but d times e breakdown okay so if we and already we know q is proportional to vd to the square so that sim signifies that q is directly proportional to this d square also because e breakdown is constant so one thing is clear this function the mrr is the fun it will increase if we increase the electrode gap but that will not be linear so this option is eliminated so these two option goes away because mrr should increase but it should not be linear so these options will goes away so if you try to plot mrr versus spark gap d so for some time it is true we get some increasing function something like this but after some time we we find the mrr is decreasing on further decreasing the spark gap okay so why this is happening so this happens because there is a term which is frequency 
if we increase the spark gap then if we increase the spark gap here then the time to travel the spark from tool to the workpiece it will increase if it will increase then frequency will go down so if we increase the gap very high then frequency term will go down if we increase the t then frequency will go down if frequency will go down then also mrr will go down so they, we have to there is some optimum gap so that we have uh, so that mrr is maximum because of the frequency term as well as the vd term okay so the correct answer is t uh, sorry first increases then decreases c okay is it clear or there is some doubt okay if it is clear then we will end this session here and we will meet uh, to in the next session uh, next tuesday the same timing okay okay so bye bye good night we will meet next week welcome you all